the first spring under Jed Fish is now in the books. The Wildcats wrap things up Saturday with their spring game at Arizona Stadium. Football was just one of the festivities from the day. Team Gronk beat Team Brewski 17 to 13, but Fish acknowledged that even he wasn't solely focused on football. Fish and Gronkowski were seen throwing water balloons and squirting water guns into the student section throughout the game. Brewski was a little bit more engaged during the game and focused more on the players. He's excited about the atmosphere that Fish is creating. You know, the energy like this I think is contagious and I hope you all can recognize it with the players and the coaches and how they've been conducting themselves and the way they played out here today. It's a very competitive game, but it's great for me to be back. I mean, I love this place. Um, I told the kids in being a Wildcats forever and I feel that way. The alumni feels that way. And we had a big turnout this weekend of alumni players and we really got to know the players and the coaches and I think that was one of the best parts of this weekend too. I think he's done a great job of realizing the kids that he has to reach are 16, 17, and 18 years old, you know? And I think that's the sign of uh, a good coach recognized the sign of the times and what, how a program has to change. And I think that's one of Jed's greatest qualities. He's able to see things and see forward and how it's gonna react to kids looking at a poten being a potential future Arizona Wildcat. And I think he's done a tremendous job of that. I was not outcoached by Gronk, no. Does anybody think that, that I got outcoached? Heck no, I didn't get outcoached, no. <laughs> and that fourth down stop, it was weird. I was on offense, his team was on defense, and they made the stop on fourth down, you know? So, man, it was, it was fun. I'm glad Rob came back, and I told him I can't, I can't catch a ball 600 feet out of a helicopter, but we both love the Wildcats with, with, all, with all our hearts, and uh, us coming back is just, I hope it signals the energy of this program and, and how we all feel about it, all the former Wildcats. There comes a point where it's out of the coach's hands, okay? And the players that play, they gotta play. And you can have the plans, and you can have the excitement, and everybody's like, oh, there's the energy. It's like, uh, okay, Plumber, you gotta go out there and make the throw, okay? Pandy, go out there and make a tackle. All right, Trey, what are you gonna do? And I hope they know that, that uh, all the alumni come back. I said, we're behind you, win or, lo win or lose. But once they get out here, it's gonna be them versus USC and UCLA and those type of teams, and it's on them. Yeah, on that one, I, I don't know. I feel like I was a little too busy, you know, spraying the student section with, uh, a hose and water balloons halfway through the game. So I didn't really see much of every schematic aspect of the game. We had a bunch of trick plays and we did a lot of stuff we're not gonna be doing in the fall. So I'm not gonna spend too much time reviewing this film. Uh, I just wanted the guys to go out, play hard, compete, give it everything they got and uh, have fun while doing it. Uh, you know, I think people started really recognizing what we wanna get done here. The energy level, the excitement, the enthusiasm. And uh, I think we're, uh, we're taking steps in the right direction. Well, I'm hopeful that every high school player in America wants to come here. And if we get every good high school football player in America that wants to be an Arizona Wildcat, it'll benefit our program. And uh, we'll start winning a lot of games. And we have everything here. I've said it numerous times. We have it all. College campus, great athletics, great fan support, stadium right in the heart of the campus. And um, great academics to be able to be a part of you know, why wouldn't they come to Arizona? And we felt it was a great opportunity to showcase that. I think we uh, every year have to figure out what, what we want to do. You know, one of our core, uh, core mottos is we want to be uh, proficient, resilient, and original. So we have to, uh, we don't want to replicate, duplicate, and do things we've done before, but we're always going to try to be interactive the best we can in these situations. Well, you know, every day we practice, or every other day we practice at Tomey Field, and we see that mural of um, him in this jacket, or pretty close to it. Um, and uh, I just said to Barry, our equipment manager, I said, you know what, Barry? I go, We've got to honor, you know, well, the best head coach that's been here, the guy that's really turned Desert Swarm into what it was and had those years of the 90s that everybody wants to refer to and talk about. And uh, I said, let's try to honor him with a jacket and uh, to be able to wear it our first spring game. Earlier in the week, Fish said if you take a look at the offseason in terms of a game, the Wildcats are currently at halftime for preparing for this upcoming season. Isaiah Rutherford and Stanley Berryhill have both been through spring ball before and know there's a lot of work to do even after 15 practices. You just restart from day one. It's, there's no, no selling for less, so we just got to keep building on what we have today. I mean, take a couple days off, but get back to work once Mace hits. 
Of course. Yeah, you got to finish strong. You start strong and finish stronger. That's what we believe in this program. Yeah, it's going to be 57,000 sold out in fall. That's what the long-term benefits are going to be. I, I truly believe that. He knows what he's doing. He's bringing the community. I can feel, you can feel the buzz around the program already, and I think it's just going to keep building as we go. They're liking it. They're liking what they see. I mean, you know, a lot of people were skeptical at first when Coach got hired, but he's uh, making skeptics believers every single day, and I can see it. Yeah, so in the beginning, when we first got here, we had our uh, win first program, and with uh, Coach T.L. coming from Alabama, it was, uh, for some of the guys, it was a little different, but they got on us really hard, and we uh, got through it pretty well. So I think that starting from there and coming through the spring, we worked hard, and getting where we are now, we made big gains. Yeah, so me personally, I'm uh, getting the best shape I can, work on my technique, um, be around my family for a little bit, so those three things. I'm now joined by senior editor Matt Moreno. Now that we wrap up spring ball, what are some of your biggest takeaways? Um, I think for me, the biggest one was the defensive side of the ball. That was kind of one of the big kind of X factors, unknowns uh, coming into the season, coming into the spring, and um, you expected some big things, but you didn't really know who was going to step up, who the key players are going to be, and kind of ended up being who we thought. Um, but newcomers, Isaiah Rutherford uh, in particular, is very, very strong. Um, kind of had a great spring all throughout. But to me, it was the defensive line. I think you, you kind of had some expectations of they need to be good. You kind of knew, had an idea of who's going to be the ones to step up, Jalen Harris, Trayvon Mason, Keon Bars. But it was the entire group. It wasn't that it was just one or two or three guys. Uh, it was the entire group who really stepped up, continued all the way into the spring game. We saw it over the course of the previous 14 practices. And I thought overall that group really stood out, um, kind of did things that they were supposed to do and, and gave Arizona some confidence about what they can be during the season. And that's a big step because the defense as a whole is going to need key players to step up. And I think having some depth there, maybe better than we've seen in a long time here at Arizona, is a good sign for Arizona as a team um, and, and for the new defensive staff, for Don Brown and the rest of that staff. Um, to have that kind of ground ground to build from is a big thing. And so um, I think for Arizona, to me, it was the defensive side of the ball was kind of a big takeaway. Um, and then the running back group. You have a first-time coach coaching that group, Scotty Graham. Uh, you kind of want to ease him into things, and he got lucky. I mean, he has a talented group. There were some guys like Stevie Rocker who we weren't necessarily expecting a ton from, ended up being one of the top guys over the course of the spring. And so um, there's a ton of depth there. Guys weren't even healthy for most of the spring. So once they get everybody on board, everybody ready to go and healthy, that has a chance to be a very dangerous group, kind of lead the offense as the rest of the group kind of comes together. But I think defensive line, running back group were the two kind of standout positions to me. Now that we turn our focus to the fall, what are still some of the biggest question marks? To me, and maybe it's people are going to get tired of hearing about it, but I know it's the position everybody wants to talk about every year with any team, the quarterbacks. Um, I don't know that we have any more answers than we did, you know, a month ago. Um, we do know that Gunnar Cruz, uh, Will Plummer are going to be the two guys that at least head into the summer as kind of the one and two. Um, the guys battling for that starting job. Um, Gunnar Cruz probably was the most consistent guy over the course of the spring, um, day in and day out. He had some kind of highlight flashy moments. Uh, he didn't make a lot of mistakes, which I think is going to be big for him and his uh, quest to kind of become the starter for this team, but Will Plummer had more of those flashy moments. He hit a wall, uh, kind of maybe in the second week of spring ball, and then as the last couple weeks played out, he finished out really strong, put together some really strong practices, and I think uh, set himself up to, to be in a very, very much in that competition with Gunnar Cruz for the starting quarterback job heading into the rest of the offseason. So uh, those two are going to be the top two. Looks like we also have someone who is here on Thursday watching practice here again today, Saturday uh, at the spring game in the crowd. Jordan McLeod made the trek over from Florida, from USF. He'll be joining the program in June. He's kind of the X factor. We don't really know what to expect from him. He's, he's going to have the most experience. He's been a starter before uh, at a different school. Um, we'll see what he brings to the mix. He's going to have a shot, I think, and he'll be given an opportunity to try and win this job once the summer rolls around, once training camp rolls around. But um, there's still a lot to be answered about that group. And I think for Arizona, it's not a great position to be in. I don't think we knew that. I think we all kind of understood they weren't going to have somebody named, you know, today at the spring game as their true starter. But um, they have some direction. I do think there was progress from a lot of the group, Will Plummer and Gunnar Cruz included. I think those guys made quite a bit of progress. And so now it's just going into the offseason, them getting used to the receivers, them working through the player run practices and improving as much as they can. Because when they get out in training camp, 
Jetfish didn't kind of hide what the fact is going to be. I think he called it a war. It's going to be a war to win the, uh, the starting quarterback job. It's going to be a real battle. And so I think for Arizona and all those guys involved, um, they need to bring their A game. And that'll be very interesting to see as they kind of go out through the summer. And then when we get back here at training camp. For one last time from Arizona Stadium, thank you for joining us all spring long. With Matt Marino for GoEasyCats.com, I'm Kelly Harrison.